You know, in additive manufacturing, metal additive manufacturing started as a simple matter of melting a metal powder selectively. Now you can use, uh, you, can, you can input the energy in a lot of ways. It could be by laser, it could be by electron beam, but there's a new technique. We're talking about atomic diffusion additive manufacturing. I'm with John Riley, he's Vice President of Product for MarkForge. John, atomic diffusion additive manufacturing, what is that? So it's basically uh, the intersection between extrusion printing and metal injection molding. Um, for around, uh, for a long time now, we've been uh, creating end-use components through metal injection molding. Uh, what, how you do is uh, you take a uh, metal powder, you bind it in a plastic material, and you shoot that into an injection mold just like you're injection molding plastic. Um, but once you have that shaped part, you then uh, wash it in a debinding station that takes the plastic out of it, uh, leaves a little bit left to hold the powder together, and then you center it in an oven, and the metal diffuses into itself. Um, the part shrinks about 20% and you're left with your solid final component. So what we do uh, now in the printing side is we're able to create a, uh, a way to actually extrude that same material and form your part additively, layer at a time, uh, to build it into the shape that you want your final part to be. In software, we scale it up so that we account for the shrinking that'll happen in the centering process. And then after that, you just uh, send it through the same end processing that you would with metal injection molding. Um, so what I'm holding here is a sprocket from the Ducati that's behind us um, that we've printed using that process and then sintered. And uh, this is 17-4 stainless steel. And as you can see, it's a solid part. It's uh, incredibly strong. We're seeing uh, strength performance that's equivalent of rot stock 17-4. Um, so we're able to get really great parts uh, in an additive way. And now there's some advantages to creating parts this way um, that we think are really going to change the industry. First of all, uh, you can do now captive infills. So just like when we print plastics, you can print a 50% triangular infill inside of your metal part. That means the part's lighter, it's still strong, and you use a lot less material in making it so the per part cost comes down significantly. Secondly, this extrusion-based technology, as we've already shown in uh, 3D printing over time, just fundamentally scales down in cost. So our vision for this is that over time, you'll be running racks of these things operating in parallel, actually producing end-use metal components just by printing them additively into the shape of the part that you need. The last really interesting part about it is because it's based on the metal injection molding technology, there's hundreds of different alloys that you can uh, powderize the metal and add it to the plastic binder. So you'll be able to print uh, all sorts of different materials. We're starting with stainless steels, but Inconel, uh, titanium, tool steels, aluminum, like 6061, pretty much any alloy you can imagine, you can print using this process and then center it down into your final part. So it unlocks this world of different materials that hasn't existed before in 3D printing. You can finally start to imagine eliminating the molding process completely and going straight from like uh, the design to the part. Um, which I think is really going to change the way that we work when we're creating metal parts because now you don't have to go through this entire long lag process before you get to your end component. You can design it, print it, and have that metal part in your hand the next day. Um, and that's really going to change the speed at which parts and uh, products are designed and made. Now, I understand uh, beyond the metal world, uh, Mark Forge is also working on some interesting composite technologies. Yeah, so we actually got our start in composites, and it's one of the ways that we learned a lot about how to print these uh, these metal powder materials. I've been printing this thing called Onyx, and what it really is is a nylon base with chopped carbon fiber added to it, which is pretty similar to the plastic with the metal powder added to it. Um, and actually, we're on our fourth generation print platform now for this stuff. Um, what you do is uh, pretty much the same, but what we do uniquely on the composite side of the business is we'll reinforce this part with a continuous strand of carbon fiber. Uh, so if you need a really strong, really lightweight part straight off of a composites printer, we can print that for you. And our application for the composites parts is primarily jigs, jaws, tools, and fixtures in the manufacturing process. So if you have like a, uh, a robot arm with a gripper jaw on the end, and that's what we're looking at here, um, to move this coupling around, uh, they actually grab it. There's three of them that go on the robot arm. Uh, it's lighter weight than the one they were using made out of aluminum. They were able to manufacture this thing in a day instead of waiting for four weeks for it to come back from the CNC shop. And it cost them about one-tenth of the price of the CNC aluminum. That's interesting because, of course, uh, uh, carbon's a, it's one of the original sort of functional fillers that, mm. that, that have, have some strengthening effect. But to get the, to get really high strength parts, historically, you need a very high aspect ratio fill material, and that's historically created enormous problems in filling molds and layout. It's it's just it's hard to extrude, it's hard to move when you get very very long needle like like reinforcing fillers in there. As, uh, in this case, uh, you're talking about very very long fibers. Essentially, they're reinforcing this. So right? actually, actually, we do it two different ways. So there's chopped fibers, which are yeah. smaller, that go into the nylon that we use to print the shell. 
but then inside we print a continuous strand of carbon fiber. Um, and it's once per layer that that strand is laid down. So it actually fills from the outside in, the inside out, or isotropic patterns on the way up. You can create sandwich panels. You can sort of dynamically reinforce the part to be strong in any way you need. Um, and that continuous fiber is where the real strength comes from. And that's how you can get a part that's printed on a composite printer that has a strength of aluminum in two and a half axes. So it extrudes it and lays the fiber in like spaghetti, a sense? Yeah, the, yeah, exactly like that. It lays it down like uh, in a pattern that finds it. It does this like traveling salesperson algorithm that finds okay. the the uh, the path through the entire part to lay in the most amount of fiber. And it just fills it out in a continuous path. And so we've printed like a chain link, for example, because fiber is really good in tension, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, did a pull test on it to see how much weight it could hold. And we were able to lift up to 22,000 pounds on a chain link printed on one of our printers. For reference, that's the weight of a school bus. So you get like actual really strong parts uh, straight off of one of our printers. So we think of uh, fiber orientation being difficult to control, a statistical process for, for many manufacturing presses. In this case, you actually directly control it because you lay it in in any pattern you want. So yeah, can... we're pathing it directly into the part uh, as part of the print part process with a lot of degrees of control in our software. So you upload your STL file, mm -hmm. you pick your fiber type, and you can do fills across the entire part. Uh, possible to, to custom, uh, custom tailor a highly anisotropic uh, properties in the part this way? Yeah, so you get two and a half axes of strength. Uh, the Z strength is still plastic strength mm -hmm. um, because we build it layer at a time. If you need strong Z, it's easy to design for because you can make a second part and put the two together mm -hmm. and get the fiber running in both directions. Mm -hmm. um, but you just have a lot of degrees of flexibility and freedom in our uh, design software. It's called Iger. It's based in the cloud. You can check it out. You can get a sample online, mm -hmm. uh, upload your part. It'll tell you like cost estimates, weight estimates, print time estimates, and you can uh, selectively reinforce it however you like. Um, and you can rotate the fiber as it goes up through the layers um, to get that strength that you need, just depending on your application. Hmm. Uh, High-performance automotive, aerospace, sporting goods, possible applications for this? Yeah, all of those, uh, but like I said at the beginning, our real sweet spot is manufacturing lines where they need like really strong parts uh, and many times really quickly. Uh, you know, if your line goes down and you're waiting around to get a part CNC to fix it, you're losing millions of dollars. If you can print that part immediately and have it ready in a few hours and put it back on the line and get it running, uh, that changes the game. And you need real strong parts to do that. And MarkForge has always been about printing strong parts. Radical new ways to additively manufacture metals and composites, says John Riley from MarkForged.